Did you know that a single canal will turn thousands of hectares of Afghanistan's barren land into fertile farmland and bring in an average annual revenue of $500 million? The Koshatepa Irrigation Canal, currently under construction, is a colossal project aiming to provide food for millions and create hundreds of thousands of jobs. But this ambitious endeavor is fraught with challenges, from geopolitical tensions with neighboring countries to the impact on local communities. Will the Koshatepa Canal be the key to Afghanistan's prosperity, or will it lead to new conflicts and problems? Let's find out. To underscore the full scope of this project, let's dive into the details. The Koshtepa Irrigation Canal is a game-changer for Afghanistan. Imagine thousands of hectares of barren land transformed into thriving agricultural fields. This canal, one of the largest in the region, channels water from the Amu River to the Kaldar district of Balkh province. Stretching an impressive 285 kilometers long, 108 meters wide, and 8.5 meters deep, it reaches all the way to the Faryab and Akhoi district. With a capacity of 6,500 cubic meters of water per second and 20 billion cubic meters annually, it aims to convert 550,000 hectares of dry land into lush, fertile farmland. But how exactly is this massive project being executed? The project is rolling out in three phases. The first phase, covering 108 kilometers from the Amu River in the Kaldar district to the Daulat Abad district in the Balkh province, is already complete. Phase 2, spanning 177 kilometers from the Daulat Abad to the Faryab and Khoi district, is currently underway. The final phase will see water flowing to the agricultural lands, bringing life to once dry soil. When fully operational, this canal won't just make Afghanistan self-sufficient in agriculture, it could make the country a net exporter. However, the path to this ambitious project hasn't been smooth. Despite widespread corruption and escalating violence that plague the country, the former Afghan government launched the canal project in 2021. But with the country on the brink of collapse, the effort was abandoned as the government fell. When Afghanistan's new rulers took power in August 2021, they recognized the project's immense potential and quickly resumed construction in spring 2022. Progress has been impressive. By February 2023, over 100 kilometers of the canal had been excavated, and the first phase was completed by October 2023. Now phase two is in full swing, with completion set for 2028. If successful, the canal is expected to divert about 20% of the Amu Darya's water, significantly impacting the river that borders Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan. But what are the broader implications of this ambitious project? Amid global climate change and escalating water scarcity, constructing the Koshtepa Canal in Afghanistan's Amu Darya River Valley is causing significant unease, particularly for downstream nations like Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. This extensive 285-kilometer canal is intended to supply water to millions of Afghans plagued by persistent droughts. The construction of the Koshtepa Canal casts a significant shadow over the neighboring Central Asian states, unleashing considerable repercussions. Various assessments indicate that within five to six years, once the canal is completed and operational, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan will experience a notable decline in their average water intake from the Transboundary River, dropping from 80% to 65%. The Amudari's waters are vital to these nations, providing a staggering 80% of all accessible water resources in the region. The implications of Afghanistan's water withdrawal are profound in Uzbekistan, primarily leading to a shortage of crucial water resources needed to irrigate cotton plantations in the Bukhara Khorezm regions and Karakalpakstan. Cotton is Uzbekistan's primary agricultural crop contributing approximately 17% to its GDP and supporting the livelihoods of nearly 40% of its population. The nation's agriculture is heavily dependent on irrigation, with an average annual water consumption of 51 cubic kilometers, of which agriculture uses about 90%, or roughly 46.8 cubic kilometers, according to the Uzbekistan Statistical Committee. The water-intensive practices of cotton monoculture have also exacerbated the environmental crisis of the Aral Sea's desiccation, highlighting the far-reaching impacts of Uzbekistan's water management choices on the surrounding ecosystem. For Turkmenistan, the Amudarya's waters are crucial for both agriculture and industrial activities. The extensive Karakun Canal spans an impressive 1,300 kilometers and relies on water withdrawal from the Amudarya to support irrigation and navigation sustaining about 1.25 million hectares of irrigated land. 
In a predominantly arid landscape, water is invaluable to the people of Turkmenistan. However, the canal's operation and fluctuations in the Amu Darya's water levels pose ongoing challenges that directly affect land productivity. This, in turn, impacts the government's commitment to the state order, where farmers are promised irrigation water, fertilizers, seeds, and machinery in exchange for producing specific crop quantities at set prices. An example of this struggle surfaced in June 2023, when farmers in Libab Veliat couldn't water their cotton fields due to insufficient water reaching the area. Cotton plays a dominant role in Turkmenistan's agriculture, much like in Uzbekistan, accounting for about 10% of the country's GDP, with an astonishing 91% of all water resources devoted to its cultivation. Environmental scientists are also concerned that beyond irrigation issues, the construction of a new large-scale canal in the region could harm flora and fauna and disrupt the natural ecosystems of the Amu Darya River Basin. Brock Matilla Pardave, head of the Sirzondario Hydro Meteorology Department, emphasizes that a significant drop in the Amu Darya's water levels could drastically affect humidity in this arid region. As humidity decreases, air dryness increases, which negatively impacts plants. Desertification will intensify, and various chemical elements and dust blown by the wind will harm human health, Pardave explained. What is particularly alarming, he noted, is that the canal is being constructed without considering these serious consequences. I believe that the Taliban are not meeting the necessary requirements for canal construction. It's crucial to line the canal with concrete to prevent water from seeping into the ground and being wasted. The Kashtepa Canal is being built without concrete, leading to significant water loss. This project could not only cause water shortages, but also exacerbate the negative impacts of climate change, he added. While these environmental concerns are serious, the story has another side. Despite downstream countries' nominal opposition to the Kashtepa Canal, there are clear benefits to cooperating with the Taliban on this issue. Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan have long sought Kabul's cooperation on the TAPI or Turkmenistan-Afghanistan-Pakistan-India pipeline. With significant resources already invested in the project, the Taliban's recent announcement to proceed with construction offers a potential return on these investments. This development coincides with India's growing interest in diversifying its hydrocarbon sources. A conflict over water could jeopardize this critical pipeline project, which promises to open new markets for natural gas in the region. Thus, cooperation on the Kashtepa Canal isn't necessarily a zero-sum game. Moreover, regional governments are eager to maintain close ties with the Taliban on counter-terrorism efforts. Any water disputes could disrupt these crucial discussions. Additionally, the Kashtepa Canal could directly impact counter-terrorism dynamics. Northern Afghanistan, where the canal is being built, has historically been a challenging region for the Taliban to control. Recently, the Islamic State Khorasan province has carried out several attacks in Balkh province, including the assassination of the governor. The Kashtepa Canal is not an isolated project. It's deeply intertwined with these broader issues. The new farmland created by the canal could provide settlement areas for Taliban-allied Pashtun tribesmen, strengthening the Taliban's grip on the region. Central Asian nations attempting to block the canal's construction could inadvertently increase instability in the Afghan regions closest to their borders. But what about the direct benefits for Afghanistan's people? When the canal is completed, it could potentially provide enough food for the entire country and create thousands of jobs. The canal's impact is most evident in the Kaldar district of Balkh province, where the project begins. This area is filled with stories of impoverished families making desperate choices. In many villages, young children, especially girls, are forced into grueling carpet-weaving labor. This steals their childhoods and exposes them to severe respiratory illnesses from prolonged dust exposure. The widespread use of opium and other locally produced drugs to sedate infants so their mothers can weave carpets has led to addiction issues among young women and girls in northern Afghanistan. If successful, the Kashtepa Canal could liberate thousands of children from such labor-intensive jobs by providing alternative livelihood opportunities, especially through improved agriculture. It's expected that industries related to the canal will employ over 250,000 people in the area. These advancements in agriculture and employment could ripple out, addressing various societal challenges like labor exploitation, drug addiction, forced marriages, child abuse, and the troubling prevalence of child marriages, all primarily driven by extreme poverty. As construction continues, the eyes of the world will be watching closely. Will this ambitious project fulfill its promise and lead Afghanistan to a new era of prosperity, or will it become another tale of unrealized potential? What do you think? 
share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more in-depth explorations of transformative projects around the world.